Hello everybody. I'm going to talk about a writer that all of us know. A writer who has written very deep novels about the dark human psyche. We all love his heart of darkness because of its moral ambiguity. Yes, Joseph Conrad, 1857 born. He was Polish. Joseph Korzeniowski, that is his name. His father was a Polish patriot who was exiled to Russia. Joseph Conrad also traveled being in the merchant navy. He traveled to Martinique, to West Indies, to Far East, to Congo in Africa, where Heart of Darkness is set. His voyages formed the background of all his major novels. Conrad is a writer with modernist elements. He wrote about psychology of human beings, psychologically probing novels. His novels show class issues, east-west encounter, moral ambiguity, guilt, redemption, isolation. And have you read Heart of Darkness? You should, it's a small book. It is so poetic. So poetic, poetic prose. That is another feature of modernism. Conrad also analyzed colonial themes as I just mentioned. In Heart of Darkness you see Kurtz, a white man going native. So Conrad's novels became very popular because they had the element of adventure stories or action novels. These were very popular genres in the 19th century. He took the adventure story genre, invested it with modernist elements, moral depth. And that is the formula of a Conrad novel. Conrad was given knighthood, but he refused it, I think, before his death, just before his death. His death was in 1924. The first novel of Joseph Conrad came in 1895. As I have said in many videos, 1895 is the year in which the first novel by H.G. Wells came, Time Machine. The last novel by Thomas Hardy came, Jude the Obscure. The last play by Oscar Wilde came, The Importance of Being Earnest. Very important year, 1895. Almayer's Folly, The Mistake of Almayer. Caspar Almayer is a Dutch trader here. And he did a lot of things in his life, the consequences of which he is suffering. Caspar Almayer is after money. He travels to Southeast Asia in search of a gold mine. He marries a Malayan girl for money. The marriage went wrong because it was a marriage based on wrong reasons. The girl doesn't trust white people either. They have a half-caste daughter, Nina. Almayer wants her to live like a white woman. She doesn't want that. She has a confused identity. So the novel leads to a lot of disasters in Almayer's life, leads us to a lot of disasters, disasters in his life. So the novel leads us to a lot of disasters in Almeyer's life. The wife leaves him. The title refers to a house that turns out to be a mistake. Half built house. So mistakes that people do, isolation, betrayal, personal tragedy, these are all themes of later novels of Conrad as well. The next novel is The Nigger of the Narcissus, 1897. In this novel, we have a West Indian sailor, James Tate. He is on a ship called Narcissus. This ship is bound to London. It is going from our Bombay to London. And on this ship, James Waite is ill with tuberculosis. He had a very 
problematic relationship with the other sailors and when he is ill with tuberculosis there is also a storm some of the crew members save his life by placing their own life and the life of the ship at risk but there is a, a divide between the crew members on this basis many of them consider the dying sailor to be a bad omen many of them hold james wait responsible for the storm and the disaster that the ship is facing so this is a complicated situation where uh, seamen's lives seamen's superstitions seamen's relationship etc are being dissected analyzed the same element of a seaman's culture is there in heart of darkness as well so at the end of nigger of the narcissus james wade grows weak and dies and then the ship is saved once he dies there is a strong wind that leads the ship to the shore so were all the superstitions right after all the ship narcissus is like a microcosm of the society the novel is steeped in racial themes blackness versus whiteness good versus evil blackness associated with evil and uh, next novel heart of darkness was first serially published in blackwoods magazine in 1899 it became very controversial because of the post colonial critique made by critics like chinua achibe heart of darkness is a novel that shows the theme of savagery versus civilization savagery of africa which is of course a problematic theme versus the civilization of the west africa represented by kurds and civilization represented by malo we have a an unnamed narrator who is telling us on board a ship the story of malo marlo is telling his story very soon malo becomes the narrator so malo is telling the story to the to the unnamed narrator and other people on a ship and malo talks about his journey to congo malo talks about having encountered a man named kurts in congo and what he learned from that encounter how it was a life changing encounter the message of the novel is that probably the enemy is within ourselves we are fighting ourselves the novel definitely makes a critique of colonialism and the way in which colonialism destroys africa and exploits africans but the africans are depicted in zoological terms the africans are treated like animals as if they don't have a civilization or language or culture so that is problematic chinua achibi pointed out that uh, there are so many colonial elements in this novel it's a very pessimistic novel pessimistic about the human condition now let me tell you more details of heart of darkness there is a ship or rather a large boat called nelly anchored on the thames the unnamed narrator and a group of his sailor friends are all there on the ship there is a beautiful magnificent description of the scenery poetic language i told you and marlo starts talking to us to to the narrator and to us traveling was always marlo's passion maps were his obsession he is from the beginning critical of colonialism but traveling meeting other people seeing other cultures that was a great passion for marlo so marlo finds a job with an ivory trading company it is his aunt who gets him this job and marlo visits the company's office from the beginning there is something eerie about the company 
and there is a scene when before he starts sailing Marlow has to meet a doctor and the doctor measures Marlow's cranium and suggests that the trip to Congo might change him in some way later on in the novel after reading the novel we understand that the white people had the belief or the fear that encounter with Africa encounter with African culture or lack of it would turn white people somehow into devils and that is what kind of happens for Kurds Kurds is a an agent of the ivory trading company he works in the interior of Congo and he is madly successful he is phenomenally successful compared to the other agents tons and tons of ivory are produced by Kurds and his people how he had oppressed them he had held them in fear like Emperor Jones holds the natives of that island in fear that is how he controls them like that Kurds had done inhuman things to achieve this kind of success and as Marlowe travels into Congo he hears stories of Kurds mysterious man he also meets a Russian from whom he gets a very confusing picture of Kurds the Russian thinks Kurds is a remarkable man but at the same time the Russian wanted Kurds to leave it is suggested that something happened to Kurds and then finally after two months of travel Marlow reaches Kurds' house in between there were fightings, killings there was a lot of description of the African forest the stillness of the African forest the, the terrifying nature of the forest and its people and Kurds is living in a secluded house around the house there are human heads rotting on stakes and all these heads except one are facing the house Kurds is looking at these rotting human heads and living there and then the black people bring out Kurds on a stretcher he is a huge man lying on a stretcher emaciated dying but he has a loud voice Kurds knew that Marlow is coming and later Kurds talks to Marlow tells him you don't understand what happened you don't understand my story I have seen I have looked into the heart of darkness Marlow to his horror finds that Kurds has fallen from a very civilized man to a native he's engaged in a lot of pagan superstitious activities courting the devil and Marla wants to take Kurtz away for treatment Kurtz doesn't want to go because he cannot go back he has changed completely the natives also do not want them to go but Marla is strict he puts Kurds on a ship to take him away on a boat and Kurds on the boat slowly goes out of his mind he starts seeing apparitions or hallucinations he's talking to himself one day when Marlow comes into his house or into his room Kurds is looking at something probably he's seeing death probably he's seeing the devil and he's talking to himself and he says the horror, the horror that has been misinterpreted, widely interpreted is he talking about the horror of colonialism or the horror of Africa corrupting the white man probably you know from a colonial perspective even though it's controversial that is the last that Kurtz ever spoke to Marlow after that in a while Kurtz dies before he died he had given Marlowe 
some documents and a picture of a woman that he loved, he was going to marry her, his intended. After Kurz died, Marlowe goes to meet her, to the sepulchral city. Is it Belgium or London? It's not very clear. And there he meets Kurz's intended. She did not know what had happened to Kurz. The horror of it is that she still thinks of Kurz as a very civilized gentleman. She does not know what savage he became. You know, Africans are not savages. Africans are people. They have their culture, their language. But in the colonial perspective, they're like savages. And Kurtz is like savage. Savage is associated with devil. Devil is associated with evil. And the woman talks about what a gentleman Kurtz is. And she asks Malo, what were his last words? I would like to know. Malo couldn't tell her the truth. Malo tells her a very sweet lie. He tells her he died with your name on his lips. He couldn't tell her the truth. So this is a very intriguing novel, a very complicated novel. On one side it looks like very colonial, looking the white man's perspective of Africa, looking at Africans as savages, believing that white men will be corrupted by Africa. That is problematic. But you can't deny the beauty of the novel, the, the amazing, breathtaking ambiguity of the novel. It is a masterpiece, Heart of Darkness. It is a very small novel also. I hope you will read it. It belongs to the genre of psychological realism. It explores psychological effects of imperialism and colonialism. And it has shifting points of view. There are two narrators, as you know. The next novel is Lord Jim. Lord Jim is also a novel that explores guilt, cowardice, redemption. Jim is a young sailor. He becomes a captain of a ship. And he, in a dire moment, abandons his ship. That is bad. The captain should never abandon the ship. That is in sail, a sailor's culture. Do you remember the movie Titanic? The captain doesn't escape. So Jim does something he should never have done. Jim is a coward for abandoning his ship when the ship is in danger. And he's publicly censured for this act. Later, Jim travels. There are lots of characters and situations. He goes to an island called Patusan, where he becomes like a lord. The inhabitants, the natives of Patusan called him Tuan Jim or Lord Jim, which is why the novel gets its title. So there are lots of intrigues and, you know, conflicts that he enters and gets involved with and throughout the novel what is holding the various incidents together is the psychology of Lord Jim and what he undergoes. The protagonist's civilizing mission, the anxieties that he harbors, the encounter with the primitive and the amoral that defines uh, civilization also. The next novel is Nostromo. Nostromo 1904 is a political novel. It is set in the imaginary Latin American country called Costa Guyana, where there is a town called Sulaco, where silver mining happens. This is a country of political instability being in Latin America. Ribiera is the dictator. There is a white man, Charles Gold, who is possessing the mining license. He is controlling the government also. 
and there are people starting to rebel because Ribera government is very corrupt. Charles Gold is also supporting, upholding the government and revolution breaks out in Costa Guyana. Now Ribera is in danger. Charles Gold fears that his hoard of silver will be taken over by the revolutionaries and he entrusts his silver with Nostromo, an Italian who is very trustworthy, a man of integrity. But Nostromo, when he gets hold of the silver, he is also on good terms with the revolutionaries. Nostromo undergoes a mental change. Nostromo feels cheated and used. Nostromo wants to steal the silver because he thinks he is rightfully, he is indignant and he thinks he has a right to possess all this silver. Again, there is moral confusion and finally Nostromo dies. That is the novel Nostromo. Same themes as before. Guilt, moral ambiguity, the conscience is always playing a major role in all these novels. Joseph Conrad's Typhoon is another novel, 1903 actually. Again, tropics, seafaring, cyclone storm, adventure. These are the formula for many other novels. The novel Typhoon as well. Then there is a novel, The Secret Agent. It is a simple tale that is also the subtitle. It is set in London, not in the tropics, depicting the life of Mr. Verlock, who is a spy. The secret agent is a story of a spy political novel. Now, did you know, guys, Joseph Conrad wrote a novel based on crime and punishment. Joseph Conrad's Under Western Eyes is based on crime and punishment. It is set in Russia and Switzerland. The narrator is Moral Don Raskolnikov of Dostoevsky. Here in Under Western Ice, the narrator's name is Razumov. There is actually a cynical view of crime and punishment here. A cynicism about the historical failures of revolutions, etc. The shadow line singular, not plural, the shadow line, a confession. It is a narrative told from two different points of view. And then there is The Rover, which is Joseph Conrad's last completed novel. These are the major works of Joseph Conrad and uh, very important early modernist and Edwardian realist. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please read some of these novels. They are beautifully written. Happy reading. Happy research. Lay the foundations of the most amazing career. Bye-bye. All best wishes to all of you.